Is it live yet? Okay, we are now live with the I Am A Hero Spotlight Presents Super Good Web Show name of the show that I keep changing because I haven't decided on one yet. This is Nicole D. Girolamo, and she is a self-published author. I'm going to take off these ridiculous glasses because I can't see with them on without contacts. So, <laughs> uh, this is Cordell David Jackson Winrow. Um, he, is our, he is our PR rep business visionary, and I am a hero. He is my scheduling genius because, well, that's just, he's really good at it. <laughs> so, um, Nicole, um, let's just get right down to business here. Who are you and where are you from? Well, as you said, my name is Nicole DiGirolamo. I'm from Scataway, New Jersey. Woo! All right. <laughs> and are you, did you, is that where you grew up? Um, pretty much. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, met, I met Nicole uh, several years ago uh, through some mutual friends. And so basically, um, Nicole, you are a published author, correct? I am. All right, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's a really big accomplishment. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your book and the projects that you're working on? All right. Um, well, I have four books in print and wow. two that, also, <laughs> that, are, um, that I sell only electronically. Um, okay. Print's expensive. Yeah. But I wrote this. This is my first story, The Glurp. And I wrote this my first year teaching. Okay. Um, However, that was back in 03. Oh, wow. Um, but about two years ago, I was no longer employed, mm -hmm. um, had some free time. So I started playing with the idea of working on this story again. Mm -hmm. And so my drawing isn't, it's not up to par. And so I started playing with the idea of different mediums. And mm -hmm. I picked up modeling clay from a dollar store. Wow. And started playing around, and he came to life. That's so amazing. This, this is my main character, Glenn the Glurp. What's it? Glenn the Glurp? Yes. Okay. Glurp. And I don't know quite what that is, but he's him. Hey, but, hey, he's published you, what, six books now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, he's obviously something if you can get six books published. Yes. Um. Well, that's amazing. Honestly, I didn't know that you had published that many. Um, if you don't mind my asking, like, is this a full-time thing for you now, or? It is not. Um, no, I'm subbing during the day. I tutor. Um, however, it has opened doors for other things. Like this summer, um, I'm going to be working with the summer camp in my town, and I'm going to be teaching <laughs> several classes. I'm going to be teaching modeling clay. Oh, wow. Um, create a book, and stop motion slash claymation. That's fun. Ooh. So I'm really excited about that. Stop motion. That is definitely an awesome medium to use. Yeah. I remember I actually did, um, I had a speech class in sixth grade uh, in Norwin High School in Irwin, Pennsylvania. Uh, the teacher was Mr. Radice. It was my favorite class in high school. And we had to do a project where we, you know, we basically had to do a news story. And everyone else, you know, they, we, we got to be actually creative in high school. And it was like the, oh, no, this was actually, I think, probably ninth grade. I, I don't remember, whatever. I don't really remember much of those years because we didn't really learn anything, did we? <laughs> um, and so basically... Um, we got to actually be creative for like the only time in school. And so we were really excited about it. Um, so a lot of people would, you know, they set up a big cardboard box and some people sat in the box and pretended they were in a TV and whatever. So I opted to do something entirely different. I opted to try out claymation because I had been messing with it with this like old VHS tape recorder mm -hmm. that we had, that my parents had. And so I did a, um, I did it from the perspective of like an ATM machine that somehow videotaped this guy getting robbed. <laughs> and so there was this guy that was like, you know, he just dirt, 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 you know, walking across and then he, 
he gets mugged, and it was kind of violent. And looking back, I wish I hadn't done that. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, with a new app that just came out from Twitter called Vine, uh, there's a lot of people from our generation, especially, who seem to have taken back the stop motion category because you can put out what little six second videos, right? Right. Yeah. No, I'm so glad you told me about that because six seconds doesn't feel overwhelming to work on a, a stop motion or claymation, which takes a really, takes a long time to do. Yep. Yep. And I mean, six seconds, depending on what I'm doing, can take 45 minutes or an hour. Um, depending on how seamless, like you could tell which ones, well, I can tell which ones I spent more time on because yes. it looks more seamless. Yeah. Uh, but, so a lot of this is like trial and error, trial and error, um, but I love how some of them have come out, and I just get lost in doing some of this. If I have an idea, it's almost like I can't not do it. Right. I have to put it. I have to do it. And so, yeah, finding something you love to do is is a wonderful thing because you time isn't. It just goes away. It goes away. It truly does. Yeah. I um I started illustrate. Okay. I can take a picture of a child and turn them into clay. What? And I started making a personalized story. And so um, I can insert a child into one of my stories. Wow. So not only do they have their name in it, but they have themselves animated. Like, That's a good idea. Yeah, no. And I did it. I mean, hold on. That's brilliant. That is okay. brilliant. You could try charge a lot of money to do that too. Well, it takes a lot of time. And sure, so okay. Absolutely. This is Okay, a hold hold, of hold it I still. Have. Yeah, just hold it still so we can see it. Okay. And awesome. he's a little smushed now cuz I've been using him. Wow. That's wow. amazing. Oh my goodness. I love awesome. it. Wow, wow, wow. That's super cool. And um so I remember I was working on him. And I know I was working on them for like, I don't know, maybe two and a half hours. But I had to go tutor someone. And if I didn't have to go tutor someone, I wouldn't have realized how much time I was working on him. Right. But I was just like, I texted his mom and I'm like, oh, you know, and I sent, him, sent her a picture of it. And I was like, man, if I didn't have to go leave, I would have finished him right now. Because I was so yeah. excited at what, you know, how well he was coming out. And sure. The only thing is with mono and clay, it's great because it doesn't dry out like play doh. Oh However, yeah, my my play doh cr dried out after you told me to not use it, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it, but after it's still soft, so it can get smushed and crushed very easily. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Well, that's so it's when you're, um, trying, when you're trying to move them around, they kind of get a little smushed and move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you could. You you know what would be fun to see? I'm sure you've seen it. The the Wallace and Gromit stuff. Have you seen yeah, that? I have. That would be cool to do like a tribute, you know, to, to Are you familiar I, with Gumby? Oh, Gumby. Heck yeah, man. That's like okay, my, my dream. My dream is for Glenn the Glurp to meet Gumby. Kind of like a Justin. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I, I, I think I think that there is there is an infinite amount of possibilities whenever we give people like ourselves and like yourself uh, the creative types whenever we give them the resources to actually create something that's up in here in their head mm -hmm. um, because I know that whenever I was growing up um, you know we didn't have access to the kind of technology that kids you know half my age now are I mean, there's there's some of these entrepreneurs and stuff that I'm seeing on like Instagram and Vine. They're like, you know, they're not even out of high school, and they're they're making like thousands of dollars a month just doing graphics or music or you know videos and stuff like that. And I'm like, I never would have went to sc I never would have spent you know seventy or eighty thousand dollars on a on a expensive piece of paper that I'm still trying to pay for, um, mm -hmm. because I would have been doing something that I love to do instead of you know, just trying to find a job. And I, I'm really excited to hear that you're you're kind of getting to a point where you're, you know, working your way out of needing to do that because obviously this is your passion and, and that's yeah. why 
we wanted to have you on the show because, well, we want to celebrate people who are going after their passion instead of just doing the typical nine to five thing because let's be real here, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. <laughs> and you're not, and people aren't happy. And so it's, it's awesome to see that, that, um, that you're smiling, you're having a good time. Uh, Cordell, do you have any questions for her? Or? Well, not so many questions, but definitely some comments from some, when you talked about the Gumby idea, I just re like, I started thinking people in my generation who grew, grew up on Gumby and, and some of these older uh, TV shows, it would be a blast from the past, but also just very much, uh, man, I remember when and to, to go into storytelling mode to the people around them and to the, their kids. I remember when Gumby was around. Like, you were too young for this, but back in my day, we had... <laughs> <laughs> we can actually use our, our parents' phrases. Like, back in my day... I can't I believe it, right? you. <laughs> too much. Back in, <laughs> back in my day, doing a claymation video, we didn't even have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had to go outside to play. We actually had to be back before the streetlights came on. You guys just sit and play Call of Duty. <laughs> Zombies. Or you're on your iPhone. Again. <laughs> if you're thinking about Gumby, who doesn't smile when they think about Gumby? Yeah. Like, my how do you not so smile when you think of him? I remember, I, I remember watching him, like, walk through books and be like, man, that'd be so much easier to read books that way. <laughs> just, like, go, <laughs> you just go into it, you know? Right. Well, I know that I, know that I certainly would, would love to see that, and... Um, I know that there's a lot of people who would, and so you know, I just want to encourage you to just keep just keep doing what you're doing, because as you know, and as you're already seeing, it, it's just a matter of time. Once once you're, you know, you get good at your craft, and once you get good at your skill set, eventually someone takes notice and is willing to pay you what you're worth and pay you good money for you know for creating something awesome, and so. Definitely, um, I would love. I mean, I would, I would definitely pay you to, you know, do a claymation model of me in an Iron Man suit. I would love I to see that. that. I would love to see that. Um, do you have a picture of anything like that? Uh, actually, my friend Jeremiah Rivera from New York, um, he drew a picture of me. Like he he he's a aspiring comic book artist and yeah. he does all kinds of artwork and music and stuff, and um, he drew a picture of me in an Iron Man suit. Um, and it's I have it at my parents' house, but I have a, a digital version of it that I could send you. Yeah, no, definitely send that to me. And as long as I have a good picture of you uh -huh. and a picture of what you want the suit to look like, I can do it. Okay, well, I can just I can Photoshop it and just put my head, you know, on <laughs> on Robert Downey Jr.'s body and. That could work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're we're trying to um, here. Let me, Cordell. Why don't, why don't you guys talk here real quick? I'm gonna do a a little guest a little guest spot here. I gotta, I gotta disappear <laughs> here for a second. Well, so. just a couple other com comments. Um, I'll be right back. Just um, in hearing about what you're doing, I, I feel it's very much uh, appropriate to say that by you following your passions and pursuing what you're pursuing where you're at in life, it really does give hope to people my age who are getting frustrated, mm. uh, who we're trying to figure out, I have all these passions, but I keep getting told not to pursue them. Yeah. I keep getting told that I, I need to do something with my life. I need to get a nine to five. I need to do something substantial. Well, I think a lot of the problem, though, really, is that people don't know what their passion is. That's another very... You know, I, I'm an elementary school teacher as well, and, but when I was younger, I struggled with reading. I mm -hmm. never thought I was a good writer. I was very insecure about that. So for me to be writing children's stories today, you know, so one of my passions also is inspiring students to write creatively, you know, creatively and using maybe modeling clay or art or different things to, to spark that. I've actually... Um, with three of the students that I tutor, we've actually written stories together. And by the end of this month, they're going to be available for free online. Really? I'm going to publish them, yeah. 
Okay. Very excited so, about this. This is the type of thing that most people don't get to hear about. Is they, there are students and people who are actually doing things like this, but nobody knows. <laughs> and it's like to be. I'm a writer myself, so I, I understand okay. the uh, what happens when you actually get to have something that you've worked so hard on and get published, mm -hmm. or be featured, or be spotlighted. Whether you make money or not, it's just the fact that I was able to do this. Yeah. You know, I'm a musician. I've played in Carnegie Hall. It, I don't care if I play in another music venue. I can say. <laughs> in my lifetime, I played in Carnegie Hall. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the, the things that happen to a person's self-esteem as you're uh, building and helping them build uh, mm -hmm. what they love to do, what they're passionate about, it's worthwhile. Like, and that's kind of the theme of I'm a Hero, empowering people to do the things that they never thought they'd be able to do. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> No, uh, really let's see, more questions. I, <laughs> I usually have a ton, but I'm just like more enthralled by what you're doing. But talk more mm -hmm. about um, what actually sparked your interest in writing, actually. Well, okay. The first story I wrote um, during my first year of teaching, I taught a second grade class, and I would give writing prompts just about every morning. And sometimes I'd write an example. The glurp was my example. And I thought it was pretty decent, so I held on to it. I made sure I saved it, you know, typed it up and kept it on my computer. And I looked at it every so often. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think just playing with the, the Play-Doh, the modeling clay, and seeing them come to life was just so much fun. People ask me, like, how do you do that, or what made you even think of doing that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, I had some clay in my hands, and that's what came out. <laughs> you know, I had a, I'd have an image in my head, and I'd have to do it. Um, so it's been, I have moments where I am, if I have something, an idea in my head regarding a story. There are times where my mom has thought that I didn't go to bed because I'm up early working on it and I'm up late at night working on it. Wow. Um, and then other times where it's like I, I'm kind of not in that creative mode. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely takes something out of you, though, sometimes. Because you're giving, I think it takes. Hey, everybody. Um, Hi, Robert. Oh gosh, that is hilarious. So, uh, I'm I'm listening. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just started. I just started looking at him again. You know. Not. It's okay. Continue. <laughs> Way to get in I'll, character. I'll wait. I'll wait. It's okay. Way to get in character. I appreciate it. <laughs> I think you did the reverse, though. You put him on your head. You switched heads with him. What? You put his head on your body. I cool. thought I was supposed to put your head on his Iron Man. Oh, well, well, uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan's in the other room. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll just, I'll just wait until he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and he even changed the name to... I, did, I, did, I didn't mean to interrupt. Continue. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just more enthralled at... Uh, that uh, what you're doing. <laughs> so I have one more question. So yes. your first time is using the modeling clay. Did it come out perfectly the way you had intended it to, or was it a lot of trial and error? Actually, um, initially they were more flat. Really? Um, yeah, they were more flat. All of the characters, and then um, I was at my aunt's house aunt's and uncle's house, and decided to try to make them 3D. And April Apricot, one of my characters, she was the first one I made um, 3D. And, yeah, so it's been trial and error um, through this whole thing. 
<laughs> of how to make um make them up many times because as you're moving them around and setting the stage, they get smushed. Or yeah. So uh, just just a question from Hollywood over here. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> do you uh do you use a tripod or or anything like that? I use my iPhone. You don't you don't use a tripod? Okay, my uh my Robert Downey Jr. impression is not very up to par right now, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get rid of that right now. <laughs> um, no, I need um I need to get right. something to actually hold it up. Yeah, there's um. I was going to ask because I I use um, I use a combination of my iPad and my iPhone whenever I'm doing my own animation stuff on Vine, and um, I actually got a tripod that has it's one of the, I think it's by a company called Joby J O B Y I'm not sure I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right, but it basically has um, this thing where you can kind of maneuver it around. Actually, I'll go grab it so you guys so you can see what I'm saying, but. I do you want to see what I've used to hold to do my um, animations on Vine? Yeah, sure. This Where's mug. That? A mug? Nice. With, clay that, with modeling clay stuck inside. That's I awesome. My phone <laughs> in to keep it still. Yeah, <laughs> I use what's available. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, yeah. Talk there's about it's, ingenuity. Talk oh. about ingenuity. What did you say? Oh, I was just saying. Talk what? Oh, I was I was just reiterating that you had mentioned uh, the ingenuity that's required whenever you don't have the kind of resources that we would like, you know, to do the kinds of things that we would like to do. Um, so you know, we're we're in the process now of of seeking investors and people who are willing to kind of you know pour into the I am a hero thing so that we can have more freedom to do cooler and bigger stuff and you know help people like yourself because um, ideally I would like to be able to say you know as like a surprise you know at the end of the show or something oh hey just so you know um, on behalf of I am a hero and you know XYZ and all these companies you know we're gonna present you with you know fifty thousand dollars to pour into your business and whatever you know that that's my ultimate vision for doing this stuff However, haven't found anybody who's willing to do that yet. Um, but, yeah. you know, we're working on it. Oh, and yeah. so, um, you know, it's kind of like how Oprah and Ellen do on their shows, you know, where they would just celebrate people who are really going after their passion and then helping them kind of take it to the next level. Um, and so, you know, definitely check out. I know that there's, um, there's iPhone tripods that you can get on Amazon for pretty cheap um, that are, you know, you can maneuver them around and, and, like hook them I up to, to, to stuff. Something that's a little better than my mug. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. It's like I can get different angles. Yeah, the, this these uh, there's certain tripods. Uh, it's it is J O B Y is the name of the brand. Um, you basically can just connect it to anything. It has like these little legs that are maneuverable that that really hold things in place. Um, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, I've I've been able to get a lot of really cool shots. Um, yeah, and so. Anyway, um, I think there was yeah there was just one more question, and then we'll we'll kind of wrap it up just because it's going a little long. Um, do you have any tips or suggestions for aspiring entrepreneurs or kids who are like still in high school and have everyone breathing down their neck? Hey, Cordell's wearing one of my shirts. <laughs> um, I'd say really try things out. Trial and error. I mean, you got to try things out. How do you know what? You you're passionate about unless you're trying things out. Yeah. I mean, it might not work. I tried, I made him a bunch of different ways mm -hmm. and he didn't come to life until I kept trying. Yeah. You know? just, so, just don't give up basically, right? Yeah. Until you find your passion and then it's amazing. It's not, it's, it's not work. You're not, you don't feel, well, I don't feel confined. Yeah. You know, um, and I've taught and I love teaching, but if I were to go back and teach in the traditional way, I really do feel I'd enjoy it for a short while, but then I'd feel like confined again. And yeah, absolutely. So, well, still that's, love it, but just not in that traditional way. You know that. You know, right behind me, like this is this is just my garage, but I mean, I set up a green screen and you know my video stuff and whatever. 
Um, so, I mean, this has all just been trial and error for me too. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've learned a lot of what not to do more than what to actually do at this point. Um, but we've, you know, this, this interview process and stuff like this, it's been working out really nice because we've met a lot of really cool people. Uh, we've connected with people over at Zappos and um, working on just getting some stuff off the ground with different actors and directors and whatever. And so, you know, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. And that's, that I think for me uh, is what makes it worth it at the end of the day, despite the fact that we might not be seeing the financial element of it as much as we would like to, um, you know, and I know that you can say the same thing. It's like at the end of the day, you can go to bed knowing that you're doing something that you're passionate about. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So. Look at that. He's, he's got great advice. This guy has got great advice. <laughs> I'm sorry. When I see my three year old grand godson, you know, clap and jump up and down because he sees himself in his, in his own story. Yeah. You know, see, he sees him insert it in a story, you know, that just... There's nothing like that. Yeah. That's, so, that's just awesome. Yeah, when I see young children love my books, that's, that makes my day. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, um, let's, uh, let's just say bye to our special guest. Uh, Robert, thanks so much for stopping by. Anytime. I'm going to go get some shawarma. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a cheesy joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. I have fun. It's my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> this is my YouTube channel, and if people want to hate, whatever. No, next get your time, own, get your own channel. Stuff like this. <laughs> However, I just don't want to do any of it because I'm scared I'm going to get knocked off. What did you say? I'm I'm scared that the this is going to drop me like it did. Oh before. yeah, it was it was being kind. That's of why weird. I'm not having fun. Uh, <laughs> It's all right. Well, yeah. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for your time. Um, is there anything else that you want to say, or you know? Oh, real, real quick, do you have a website? Um, Facebook. Okay. Love and Lerp. Um, we gotta get we gotta get you a, a website set up, man. We really do. Man, six books and you don't even have a website. Come on, we'll yeah, talk here in a little bit. Facebook. If you Google Facebook. him, you'll find him, and you can find like if you search Vine and Glenn the Glurp, you'll find some of his videos. Okay. Um. Are you on Twitter? Oh, and I've got a blog. To, no. Okay, you definitely well, hop person. on Twitter. Okay. Uh, I can we can help you with a lot of that stuff and setting up the social media and all the blogging and stuff. I'd have no I have no problem helping with that. Okay, cool. So I do need to be a little better with that. Yeah. Well that's no. the thing is like there's there's ways that you can automate things and set things up so that once it's there and done, you don't even have to think about it anymore. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it's really nice. So all right, Nicole, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Cordell, do you have any last thoughts or um, final thoughts? Final, final thought from Cordell Winrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my monocle. Here, let me get my monocle out. You gotta be astute up in the interview. <laughs> I show that chap. Um, I would say um, for for what you're doing, Nicole. I, I just want to say thank you for inspiring people. To go beyond what they can think that they can do, um, for, for taking the time to show kids that there's more than what they can see, and being able to see more inside of them, and to be able to plant seeds to even see those things grow. Mm -hmm. um, being 27 and Ryan being the old man that he is. With I'm 29. Kids. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just messing with you. Uh, it, it helps us know that what we're doing is, will pay off, and there is a payoff as we endeavor to uh, empower others to do more than they ever thought. And so you're one of the shiny examples of what that looks like. I can't we say, like shiny things. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, for Absolutely. For inspiring hope. And also just taking the time to empower 
the kids that you're working with. Like it really, there is a major payoff on that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my books are available on the iBook store and at smashwords.com and perfect. Like are you on Amazon? No. Ah, we got to help you with that too. Okay, we're going to we're going to help you make more money. How's that sound? <laughs> I like that. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. Um so Nicole, thank you so much. Um for those of you who are watching, if you're interested in being on the show, to talk about your project or your vision or whatever it is that you're working on, um, or if you're, you know, uh, if you believe that you're an everyday superhero in some way, shape, or form, let us know. Uh, you can get in touch with us through our website, IamAHero.me, or you can email me directly at IamAHero.me at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. My username is IamAHero613. Uh, Cordell, what is yours? I'm a hero 559. I'm a hero 559. Okay, perfect. And uh, we will keep you guys posted whenever we get Nicole into the 21st century. So. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it wasn't that funny. But anyway, um, yeah, that's about it. So until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. And. Uh, yeah, I don't have any real big way to end the show, so I'm just going to hit end I'm broadcast. I'm a hero, now. and so are you. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's our tagline. I am a hero, and so are you. Check out our hashtag. Uh, it's just hashtag I am a hero, and you can find all kinds of people all around the world who are doing superhero stuff, whether it's graphics, artwork, uh, doing good deeds, paying it forward, stuff like that. So that's our vision, and we're sticking to it. So we appreciate you guys. Have a great day, and a better